Topping our world lead right now, U.S. troops are heading to Afghanistan for an urgent rescue mission. They're there to evacuate non-essential American embassy personnel and get Afghan allies out as soon as possible, all while the Taliban rapidly advance. Starting in June, you can see the Taliban in red wrestling back control of the land faster and faster from the Afghan government, noted in gray. Today, they claim half of all regional capitals. As the U.S. prepares for the worst, telling diplomats in Kabul to destroy sensitive documents at the embassy. CNN's Clarissa Ward joins me live on the ground in Kabul. Clarissa, you got exclusive access to the Taliban. What did you see? That's right, Pamela. We actually traveled to Ghazni province. It's just a few hours south of Kabul. That province is now completely under the control of the Taliban. And they took us to see some bases that once belonged to the U.S. and are now very much under their control, along with whatever they found there, Humvees, weaponry, ammunition. We also, while we were there, though, Pamela, got to really have a glimpse into what life is like under the Taliban, as that appears to be what Afghanistan's future now looks like. This is what remains of the U.S. presence in much of Afghanistan. The hollowed out skeletons of sprawling military bases now under the control of the Taliban. Once there were hundreds of U.S. and NATO troops at Fob Andar in Ghazni province. The last Americans left a couple of years ago, but their memory still lurks ghost-like. It's just so strange to see this, you know? The Taliban granted access to CNN along with award-winning Afghan filmmaker Najibullah Qureshi, keen to show off the spoils of war. So we're just arriving at another U.S. base and already I can see a large number of military vehicles over there. According to the Taliban, Afghan forces here surrendered three weeks ago when their food ran out, leaving weapons and ammunition and more. When the Americans were here, were you and your men attacking this base a lot? Yes, many times we attacked this base when America was here. We did operations. We were using IEDs. The Americans had their helicopters, weapons, and tanks on the ground. But we Mujahideen resisted very well. Now they roam through what's left of the tactical operations center. Anything of value will be stripped down and sold. Walking through what's left of these American bases, you have to ask yourself, what was it all for? America's great experiment with nation building now vanished into dust. It's our belief that one day Mujahideen will have victory and Islamic law will come not to just Afghanistan, but all over the world. We are not in a hurry. We believe it will come one day. Jihad will not end until the last day. It's a chilling admission from a group that claims it wants peace despite continuing a bloody offensive. Since the U.S. began its withdrawal in May, the militants have advanced across the country at an alarming rate on the back of American pickup trucks. On the Ghazni Highway, we pass base after base, all flying the militants' flag. At the Andar Bazaar, it's a similar sight. The days of underground insurgency are over. And the Taliban is poised to reestablish the very emirate America once came to destroy. But Taliban Governor Maulavi Kamil insists the group has changed since then. The difference between that Taliban and this Taliban is that the Taliban of 2001 were new. And now this Taliban is experienced, disciplined. Our activities are going well. We are obeying our leaders. A lot of people are concerned that if the Taliban takes power again, women's rights will move backwards. How can you guarantee that women's rights will be protected? We assure this to people all over the world, especially the people of Afghanistan. Islam has given rights to everyone equally. Women have their own rights. How much Islam has given rights to women, we will give them that much. That is clearly open for interpretation. 
Next to the mosque, we find a classroom of young girls. But their teacher says they will only receive religious education and will not attend regular school. At night, I am separated from my male colleagues and sleep in the woman's part of the house with the children. I've been talking to some of the women in this room and I promised that I wouldn't show any of their faces, but it's interesting because, you know, the Taliban talks a lot about how it's changed and girls can go to school now. But I asked if any of these girls would be going to school and I was told, absolutely not. Girls don't go to school. And when I said, why don't girls go to school? They said, Taliban says it's bad. Here, what the Taliban says goes. This is now what Afghanistan's future looks like. Far from what the U.S. once envisioned and what so many Afghans dreamed of as the Taliban pushes on towards an all but certain victory. And Pamela, we actually reached out to some of the soldiers whose names, you might have noticed there was a mural at that base with the names uh, of some soldiers. We reached out to some of them to get their impressions. How does it feel to know that this base that you once spent time on, that you were fighting on, uh, that you lost men on, is now under the control of the Taliban? And, and one, uh, one soldier who is no longer in the military, he was a private at the time, he said, you know, when you start out in the army, you really believe that, that everything you're doing is right and you're doing it for the same, the right reasons. And now, uh, when I look at the situation and I see what's happened and I, and I see these images that you're showing me of this base, I don't feel so much angry as I feel just what a waste. What an unbelievable waste. Those were his words and, and, and I think they really stuck with a lot of us as we take stock of this incredibly powerful and potent moment. Complete dangerous evacuation efforts in Kabul as Taliban forces close in on the Afghan capital. These soldiers and Marines that are fully kitted out, putting on night vision goggles, landing in Kabul, taking positions at the airport, they're going to a combat zone, are they not? They're certainly going into harm's way, Lucas. And Is they will combat have- zone? Lucas. They will have the right of self-defense. They will be armed. But the Pentagon is refusing to call it a combat mission despite sending 3,000 troops back to the capital. So were Biden's withdrawal plans premature? Let's ask outnumber co-hosts and former White House Press Secretary Kaylee McEnany. Kaylee, um, no matter where you fall, leave the troops or take them away, um, we're in a lot of trouble there now. And now you got to send 300,000, uh, I'm sorry, 3,000 troops there to evacuate the embassy. It's a huge problem, Lawrence. Um, just before we came to air, Axios came out with a report saying there has been, quote, a stunning reversal of expectations among Biden's top aides. Uh, they've basically conceded that we will not have a diplomatic presence there as of August 31st. This is, again, according to Axios reporting. Uh, and they used to believe that they would have time to negotiate an exit, time to make sure that our, dip our uh, diplomats were safe. Uh, but it looks like now there's an evacuation effort underway. Um, this is stunning. Think about this, Lawrence. Whose fault is the this, American Kaylee? flag. Is this Biden's fault? Oh, it's fault? Joe Biden's fault. Yeah. Yes, it's Joe Biden's fault. Mike Pompeo and President Trump made it very clear to the Taliban, when we're out, you are not touching an American. Uh, they made clear that there were deterrence models. Uh, there were ways to make sure that we kept that country safe. Biden, it's crumbling. And we're going to see that American flag, Lawrence, come down off of the U.S. Embassy, a place that we've occupied for years and years and years. I hope it doesn't happen, but it's certainly looking that way. Yeah, Kaylee, we're already getting information from sources on the ground that they were told to shred all the information, confidential stuff, just in case uh, it's invaded. I mean, it, I mean, as an American, how do you feel about that? Yeah, exactly. They're making sure that this was, by the way, let me say, this was not just a place where our diplomats operated. It wasn't just an embassy. It was also an intel gathering depository. So they have to destroy those documents. They have plans in place for that. But Lawrence, the real travesty here beyond seeing this country fall is the Afghans who have helped Americans for 20 years who are fearing for their lives. One saying, I'm going to burn myself in front of the embassy just to get the United States attention. We cannot betray these individuals who for 20 years helped us as our allies. And now their lives, their families, their wives are under threat. Yeah, and this was a man that was supposed to have so much foreign policy experience and that, that was going to lead on this issue, obviously not.